Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to this first Sunday of Pentecost, and it is also Holy Trinity Sunday. A special welcome to those who are visiting today, and especially for those whom we haven't seen for a while. So Brenda O'Reilly has joined us, and we thank God for bringing you back into our presence this Sunday. It's good to see you. As it is um, Holy Trinity Sunday, the focus is on the Holy Trinity. So as we prepare for um, worship this morning, I'd invite you to rise for the opening sentences. Holy, 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 the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and who is to come. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our first hymn.
and by his command, I forgive you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Amen. I invite you to rise as we pray Psalm 8. silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is humankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? Lord our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have made them a little lower than the angels, and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds, and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky, and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have given us faith to affirm the glory of the eternal Trinity and to worship you as one. Keep us firm in this faith and safe with you forever, for you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is written in Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 to 4 and 22 to 31. Does not wisdom call and understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroad, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out, To you, O people, I call. The Lord created me as the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up, at the first, before the beginning of the earth, when there were no depths I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills I was brought forth, when he had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not, might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, playing before him always, playing in his, in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is written in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, 
But let us also boast in our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel for this morning is written according to St. John chapter 16 verses 12 to 15. Jesus says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for the Holy Spirit who reveals the truth about God. May we give glory to you and the Father and the Spirit. Amen. You may be seated for our next hymn. Grace, mercy and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. While I was studying at ALC, there was a particular lecturer who would often ask questions. And more often than not, the answer to his questions was justification. If, um, if a student didn't know, what, um, what the answer to a question was, nine times out of ten, if you just yelled out, justification, you were right. And it is this justification which allows us to stand in grace in, in, uh, in, in God. 
And some people will spend their whole lives trying to justify themselves in, um, in uh, relationships where that have broken down a, a man will blame his wife in order to justify himself and likewise a wife will blame her husband this has been going on since Adam and Eve even and still continues today young children when they are in trouble they might blame their brother it's his fault or sister. No, they did it. It's their fault. Even, um, even politicians. <laughs> Labor's fault. They're the reason we're in this mess. No, it's the Liberals. No, it's the Russians. <laughs> Blame anyone but yourself. Yep, people and even nations will spend lifetimes trying to justify themselves. They seek to justify their failures by passing the buck onto someone else. And that's by trying to make themselves appear blameless in the sight of other people and ultimately to make themselves look blameless in, front, in the sight of God. But the fact is, though we might be able to wink others into believing that we're blameless, there is no way that we can ever cover up our sins to justify ourselves in front of God, our triune God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. When it comes to God, we all fall short of the glory of God. You've heard me say this many times and that's because it is the truth. No amount of striving on our own part can make us right with God. And that's why we need to admit our shortcomings, confess our sins and repent of our sins every day. But what we cannot do, our loving God has done and does for us. And the good news from the Holy Bible from, for today, again on this festival of the Holy Trinity, is that God the Father justifies us by his grace. For Christ's sake, through faith, who has given us the Holy Spirit. God declares us forgiven, blameless and righteous in his sight. Now, someone might say, well, yeah, so what? I know what this means, but what does this mean for us in the here and now? For us who are living through the tumultuous and um, tempting turmoil of this world, and especially in our current times. Well, Paul in his letter to the Romans, which we heard this morning, tells us that justification in the sight of God brings abundant and rich blessings to us every day of our lives. But the question is, and this is the theme of my address for this morning, what blessings do we receive as a result of our justification? Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be truly pleasing to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So what blessings do we receive as a result of our being justified, as a result of our justification? Well, first of all, number one, we have peace with God. As Paul says, therefore since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God. And standing right there at the beginning of this text is the word therefore. Therefore would signify that uh, pointing to what was before and also to what is to come. 
Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God. And peace comes by faith in Christ who has reconciled us with God. And this is the peace that we receive by faith which comes to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's think for a few moments about the word peace in the Bible. In the Old Testament, the Old Testament prophet Isaiah looked forward to the coming of Christ, the promised Messiah, and he called the promised Messiah the Prince of Peace. And then later when Jesus sent out his 12 apostles, um, <clears throat> sorry, when Jesus, who was, is the promised Messiah, when he was born, an angel of the Lord sang of peace among people with whom he is pleased. And then later, um, when Jesus sent out his 12 disciples, they went out as bearers of his peace to the people. And those who repented and believed received him in um, and received his peace. Now Paul also writes to the people in Ephesus that Jesus is our peace. And to the Christians in Colossae, for in Jesus all the fullness of God was placed to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And do you recall the first words of the risen Lord as he appeared to the disciples in the closed room after he, after he had risen? Peace be with you, he, he began. And then a week later when Thomas was also with them, Jesus again began by saying, peace be with you. So that word peace is first and foremost in his um, reconnecting with his disciples after he had risen from the dead. And that's because that's what Jesus comes to bring each and every one of us. And he has done this through his suffering and through his death and through his resurrection, which he did for us. In this crazy, belligerent and often warring world where people constantly struggle to find peace, to make peace, to have inner peace, peace with others and peace with God. Our Lord's Apostle Paul teaches us this great truth. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Christ Jesus. This is a gift and what a beautiful blessing. It's the blessing of peace. A peace which the world cannot know and the world cannot give. It's the peace that surpasses all human understanding and that's the first blessing of us being justified through being justified we have peace with God now in peace <clears throat> there's also another blessing since we are justified by grace we have access to the grace of God in which we stand. We have access. Now what does Paul mean when he says we have access? Well Paul uses this word access in the sense of being granted the privilege of entering into something. And in this case it's the privilege of entering into the presence of God 
especially in worship, like we are today. So that's the second blessing that justification gives us. It means that by faith in Jesus Christ, we have already confidently entered into a loving fellowship and relationship with our gracious God. And having entered, we take our stand in his grace. As believers in Jesus Christ, we are no longer under the law, but we are now under grace. As we know, the law brings condemnation, but by faith in Christ, by faith in Christ Jesus, we are no longer condemned because of the grace in which we now stand. We take our stand in his grace. Through Jesus Christ, God the Father smiles on each of us who believes and he loves us. He wants to help us, to comfort us and he does. So what does this access mean in practice if it's not only in having access to God in grace when we come to worship, we also have access through prayer. We come into God's gracious presence and we are able to address him and especially in the prayer that Jesus taught us. The Lord's Prayer which begins with our Father in heaven. Now, cast your minds back to um, confirmation days when you studied Luther's catechism and, um, and Luther says this about the Lord's Prayer or about the opening words of the Lord's Prayer. Luther says, Here God would encourage us to believe that he is truly our Father and we are truly his children in order that we may approach him boldly and confidently in prayer, even as beloved children approach their dear father. So we have access and we can enter into our Heavenly Father's presence and pray for all the things that Jesus invites us to in the Lord's Prayer as we will again later in this service this morning. What a blessing this is, what a privilege this is that we have access because we are justified by faith. We have access to the grace of God in which we stand. And this brings us to the, a third blessing. And this blessing is in two parts. Since we are justified by faith, we boast in our hope, in our hope of sharing the glory of God and we boast in our sufferings. We boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. We rejoice and exult in the fact that, as St. Peter tells us in his first letter, that we've been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you. What Peter calls a living hope is the same as the hope of glory which Paul speaks about in our text. And later in Romans, Paul also writes that this glory that is to be revealed to us and those whom he justified, he also glorified. In his other two letters, Paul talks about um, the, uh, the power that enables Jesus to bring everything under his control and he will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. So this is our living hope of glory and that's why we can boast. We have the blessing of being able to boast 
of being able to rejoice and to exult in what God has done and is doing and will do for us through our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Now if that blessing isn't enough, and here's the second part where Paul goes on to make up and uh, make another point. We boast in our sufferings. Paul is talking at this point about the normal run of the mill everyday sufferings that we all experience at one time or another. The aches and the pains, the grief, the mental anguish. But above all, he's also talking about the pressures of living in a fallen and sinful world. And the burdens put on those, um, put on us by those who oppose our Christian faith. And yet he's saying that God permits these tests and permits, allows us to be tempted by the sinful ways of the world because through these sufferings we are led to good spiritual strengths and spiritual results. Paul puts it this way, we boast in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. Endurance is a spiritual toughness and endurance accepts suffering with confidence in Christ who knows all about suffering for our sake. Not only that, but endurance produces character. So what is this character that endurance produces? It's this spiritual vigorous like steadfastness that comes to those who are mature in their faith. It's like they've developed spiritual muscles, the muscle people of faith. And it enables them to take a stand, to make a stand when the going gets tough. And character, we might say, is like the difference between a seasoned veteran and a new recruit. A new recruit might be good at running all over the place and taking orders but a, a, um, a veteran is skilled at close quarters battle and knows how to navigate a battlefield. Christian veterans have a resilience and they have a resilient character which doesn't desert them. And this character, this character has been purified, it's been purified and refined by the, by the fires of trouble and trials and, and endured with rejoicing through faith in Christ. And this is what produces hope. This hope, as Paul said earlier, is the hope of sharing the glory of God. And then he adds, hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Here comes the Holy Spirit who gives us faith hope and love. Not some kind of mental faith, not some kind of hope that's just a wishful thinking that all things will turn out okay. Not some kind of false faith or false hope. But a real hope and a real faith, a true faith and a true hope that's full of love Love for God, love for one another, 
and love for our neighbours. True faith and true hope that comes from our Heavenly Father and His great, for us, a great love for us in Jesus Christ, His Son. This hope, faith and love that comes to us through the Holy Spirit that does not dry up and gives us a hope that does not disappoint us. So today, my dear friends, we've been meditating on the blessings that we receive as a result of justification, you're right, yes, of being declared right in front of God in, with the triune God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit through grace and faith in Christ. Now the blessings as a result of our justification is peace, a peace with God, access to God our Father. And with this hope and with this peace and with this um, access, we are empowered to boast not only in our hope of sharing the glory of God, but we boast in our suffering, the sufferings that produce endurance, the endurance that produces character, and the character that produces hope. This hope will never disappoint us because great, God's great love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit which is, who has been given for us. And so for these wonderful and abundant rich blessings that we have received and for many more on this Holy Trinity Sunday, what more can we say than thanks be to God. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'd invite you to rise as we confess our faith in our triune God with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our next hymn, and as we sing, your free will offering will be gratefully received.
Let us pray together. Loving, triune God, teach us, your children, to praise and glorify you with our lives and all that we have by serving others. Amen. God, our Father, has created us and in his love he sent his Son to redeem us. Now he gathers together his holy people by the power of his Spirit. So let us therefore come to him in the Spirit through the name of Jesus and ask him for all of our needs. <clears throat> Eternal God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, thank you for making yourself known through your mighty works. Continue to show yourself to the world by spreading the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Support all who are preparing for service as pastors and keep all the church's pastors, teachers and lay workers true to the Trini Trinitarian faith so that the community of the church may flow from the community of God. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> Heavenly Father, you formed the waters and the dry lands and your fingers set the stars and moon in the heavens. We pray for all people and all lands. Bring peace and prosperity so that all may be blessed by your wonderful goodness. And move us to care for this world as we should. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, the wisdom and word of God, you were there at the beginning of creation, yet chose to become one of us. We pray for your whole church. Protect those who are persecuted for bearing your name and bring all people to rejoice in you as their saviour. Lord, in your mercy. Spirit of God, you hovered over the waters of creation and you came to us in our baptism. We pray for those whose lives we share. Unite us in a community of love so that we welcome the stranger and support the struggling. Build us strong in faith and in lives of serving love. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Triune God you continue to give life and love. And we pray for all weighed down by heavy loads. Have mercy on all in trouble and give perseverance and character and hope founded on the suffering of Christ. Help us bear each other's burdens in a community of compassion and meet the no needs of those we know personally to be in want and whom we now name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Holy God, you are the beginning and the end, the ground of our existence and the foundation of our faith. Support us in this faith so that at our life's end we may be raised to eternal life to share with all your saints in glory. For you are Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, Lord God, Holy Father, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit is one God, one Lord, 
whom we confess as the only true God and worship as the eternal Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And so with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we adore and praise your glorious name. Holy, holy, holy God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. These are the holy things of God for God's holy people. So come, for everything is now ready. To the rise. <clears throat> the body and precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you all in both body and soul to life eternal. Go in peace of God the Father, 
Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have revealed yourself to us today in word and sacrament as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and you live in the perfect unity of love. Give us a sure faith in you. persons in one God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> May God, the Holy Trinity, who has created redeemed and sanctified you, bring you to know and adore him as one God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. You may be seated for the final hymn. 